you look at their heads there, you'll see on Emmy that their ears, eyes and nose are all situated on the very top flat part of their head. And so when they're swimming in the water, they only have to keep the top part of their head above the surface. And they can keep the rest of their body under the water while they go swimming along. But then if they decide to dive underwater, if they're going hunting for fish, for example, they can close their ears and their nose. Valves in the ears and nose which shut under the pressure of the water. And they have a third eye lens too, a see-through lens, which they can slide across to protect their eyes, but still allow them to see. Probably best of all though, I think, are their whiskers. Because if you look at them closely enough here, you'll see they've got two sets of whiskers. The usual set which most mothers have, right in front of their nose line. underneath the surface of the water and that's how they hone in on their prey. We're not feeling for the fish themselves, feeling for the wake of where the fish have been and from that they can tell not only that a fish has been there but also how big it is, where it's gone and if it's worthwhile chasing it down to try and catch it to eat. Now fish is their staple diet of course as you probably would imagine but they will eat anything they find living in, on or around the riverways and waterways where you find them. And so around the water's edge, they might also take the smaller mammals, the wading birds and their chicks, the amphibians perhaps. Out at sea they'll take the smaller, the smaller ducks and geese and herons. So out at sea, out at, out at sea. Uh, they'll be taking the smaller squids and crabs and things, of course, and so on, off the, off the surface of the water, ducks, geese, <coughs> herons. They'll take anything up to the size of a, a fully grown newt of their own. They're very strong animals. They're quite capable of doing that. But fish is their staple diet. And fish is mainly what we feed our otters here at the centre. And what I'll give them now is just a bit of a snack, maybe surprisingly. I know they take quite a few. But at the end of the day, once we finish flying our owls, we'll come back down and feed all of our otters their main meal of the day. And that's what out on their own and that's because it takes them a couple of months to begin to develop and grow through that second layer of fur, that waterproof layer of fur. And then when they are first born, rather surprisingly, otters are afraid of the water and they do have to be taught how to swim by their mothers. And it's lovely to see when we've got cubs here at the centre, because the first few times they take to the water, it will be by the mother, dragging them out by the scruff of the neck, literally kicking and screaming, dragging them down into the water, pulling them around, pulling them underneath the surface, and they're constantly trying to scrabble back out on the dry land again. And the mums just keep pulling them back in and nose them back in. <laughs> well, then after half a dozen lessons or so, they're perfectly at home in the water just as much as the adults are. You may have been lucky enough to see the bus through a year ago or so. It is sort of messy. That was a good time. Hey, I But then, uh, so once, once, they're, once they're in the water a few times, they're just as well adapted as the adults are. And they really are the most well adapted of all the semi aquatic mammals, I think perfectly adapted for a life on the land as they are in the water. 
and even the transition from land to water and vice versa is completely effortless. So there's no break in momentum whatsoever as they go from one to the other and vice versa. Now the future of otters in the UK is looking very good indeed. We always hear about the number of animals in the UK or around the world for that matter which are becoming more threatened and more endangered. It's not very often we hear about the success stories. And that's a real shame because there are a lot of success stories out there. And certainly for the UK, the otter is arguably one of our biggest. They are increasing in number. They are now found in every county of the UK once again. Uh, back from the brink of extinction, remember, to be found in every county of the UK once again. And if we give it another five or six years, well, I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see them on every special water system in the country. So really getting back to the numbers where they once were, getting back to the numbers where they could be, back to the numbers where they rightfully should be. And not only is that good news for our otters, but it's also good news for our habitats as well, because the otter is what we call one of our indicator species. It's a top predator, it's right at the top of its food chain, and so if they're doing well, if they're thriving, it means the animals below them within the food chain, they must be thriving too. And if they're thriving, the whole food chain is thriving, the habitat must be thriving. And certainly our waterways, and in particular our rivers in this country, they're the cleanest they've been for, for a long time now, and our rivers are the cleanest they've been for a good 20, 25 years. So it's good news all round. Now if anyone has any questions on the otters, then by all means feel free to ask. I'll happily answer any questions for you that I can. But the next up today will be with the deer. So just at the end, there's been a walkway here, some of you on, out onto our deer platform, and we'll call those over for you at half past 12. It's about 15, 20 minutes time for that. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>